why is the study of biology important? Nowadays, we count with various examples from day-to-day -day life that help us understand how there are many things that wouldn't have a solution if it weren't for biology. From the food we consume to the development of medicines that are sold at drugstores. Thanks to this, an illness such as the flu, which used to be a failed disease in the great majority of cases, can now be cured in only a week's time. To explain this by using a real-life example, I'll discuss a very common occurrence. It is very worrisome that nowadays, one out of 11 people suffer from diabetes. But despite all this, thanks to the advancements in science, it is now possible to have a normal life just like everybody else. For we have the ability to design very efficient treatment plans and managing the disease through planned diets and the consumption of medications such as insulin. But, what is insulin? When you eat, your pancreas releases this hormone, which transports sugar in glucose form all the way from your blood to your cells, so that it converts into the energy your body needs to keep you alive. So, when a person suffers from diabetes, this is due to the organism not producing sufficient insulin, or producing insulin that doesn't react in a correct manner. Henceforth, glucose can't access one's cells to be converted into energy, meaning one won't be able to process food adequately. This results in a buildup of sugar in the blood, and the pancreas tries to combat this by producing more insulin. But this process ends up slowing down as if the pancreas became weary, causing a major deficiency of said hormone. This makes the consumption of it a requirement, given that in the long run, the high blood sugar levels caused by diabetes can lead to other health issues, such as vision loss, diabetic food, kidney or heart problems, and even heart attacks or strokes. Thanks to the developing of genetic engineering techniques and recombinant DNA, it was possible to implement protocols for the production of this substance with a human origin. To do so, we need the help of some old friends who aren't as bad as many people think. Bacteria. The process starts by extracting the gene that codes for the production of insulin in humans, which will later be housed in a plasmid that will be later introduced into bacteria, that normally are Escherichia coli. All of this with the objective of transforming them. This organism has the ability to create insulin, however, as it does not require it to function, this hormone is to the bacteria nothing but a secondary metabolite that it will eventually dispose of. Now, this bacteria basically work for us via the production of insulin, but as we need large amounts of them, the bacteria will be subject to a harvesting within a penicillin environment at 37 Celsius degrees, approximately under a duration of 16 hours. The bacteria that were transformed with the plasmids are suitable, and those that aren't die off. The plasmids replicate themselves within the bacteria. The bacterial chromosome replicates, and when the E. coli reproduce, at least one plasmid is passed off to each of the daughter cells. And sooner than later, all cells contain the gene that codes for insulin within their plasmids. This entire process unfolds in a bioreactor, which is a system that maintains a biologically active environment with the objective of supplying our insulin-producing bacteria with a comfortable environment for reproduction and hence the further increased production of insulin for our benefit. Later on, this substance is purified, obtaining NPH insulin of recombinant DNA origin. We are very fortunate to count with such scientific advancements as part of our daily life, as well as the progress of other fields such as nutritional science which aid us in leading a balanced and healthy lifestyle. In our current time, the average life expectancy of a human is that of 71.4 years, which is thanks to the scientific advancements that have improved our health and overall quality of life. As a conclusion, studying biology and its ramifications has always been a requirement, as far as we can tell. If we look back at for history, 4.5 million years ago, when our herbivorous ancestor known as Ardipithecus thrived, it was essential to distinguish between the plants that were edible and those that were harmful. These are vestiges of a much later time, during 3200 before Christ, when the first written records were made, which mainly discuss agriculture and animal husbandry. I can conclude that what started as empirical learning later evolved into a science that has slowly aided us in understanding the natural world and how to use the supplies it provides for us. We must toss away the fear of experimentation and dare to discover new things, because the scientist is not a person who gives the right answers, he is one who asks the right questions. 